All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Forex Dot Today. Let me remind you that trading Forex is risky and not appropriate for everyone, even Kenneth. However, your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. So please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Gumbo! Hey, my name is Wayne McDonald. I'm the chief FX market strategist for Traders Way. It's a broker, you're a trader. Let's dance, baby. Let me tell you why I do these webinars. I want you to be a success. I want you to be a huge success. Traders Way said, hey, can you help our traders become a huge success for us? I said, yeah, I like making Forex traders a huge success. And here's the grand scheme of things. I'll put you on the right track, teach you what I know. You can uh, you can gain from my you know 10, 12, 14, 257 years of forex trading experience, and maybe you, you hit the you hit the road of success uh, earlier because of that. And when you feel comfortable to trade real money, you'll choose TradersWay.com as your forex trading broker. And then as you get more and more success, you'll build up your trading account. Maybe you'll, you'll start trading other people's money. You'll start a Forex trading fund. And Trader's Way can, you, can be your prime broker. That's a pretty good business model, right? Make you success first, and you pay it back through loyalty. That's not bad, right? I mean, I could hit you over the head with a baseball bat and take your wallet. <laughs> right? But that, does, that business model doesn't last very long, does it? So why don't we just make you a success for many, 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 many years. And uh, Trader's Way will earn commissions if it's, if it's an ECN that you want or earn a piece of the spread as they pass your trades into the interbanking system if that's what you want. Either way, it works for us. As long as you're a huge success, we're happy. I do these sessions every uh, single day, 7.30 in the morning, New York time, which is approximately London lunch. Great time to review what's happened and focus on the uh, session uh, coming up. I'm also at fxstreet.com every Friday, where I, even though there's hundreds of speakers there, I am 4X Speaker of the Year. Number one. Yeah. It's because I try. I try real hard. I hope it's real good. So back to the charts, pretty good, nice. Hey, by the way, London is a beautiful town. Let me tell you that. Holy smokes. That was my first time in London. And I said, Liz, this tea here at, at the palace is really great, but i got to get out on the streets. It's a sunny day. A sunny day in London. So I said, Liz, thanks for the tea. Got a roll. Lizzie. <laughs> But anyways, it was great. Funny thing about London is they park their $2 million cars on the street, right? <laughs> How'd you like to park a uh, $600,000 car on the street in front of your flat? <laughs> That's pretty funny. You think you're rich, but you don't even own a garage. Come on, peasant boy. All right, so uh, all right, so I think you see the charts good, real good. Uh, let's see, it's a Monday, so let's start by reviewing the calendar at Forex Today. It's found here under News and Calendar. Whoop whoop. By the way, I'm smoking a cigar at at a, a fabulous cigar bar in London, and this guy come, uh, he walks into the room. And he's uh, dressed impeccably, right? Beautiful, tailored, not even business suit, just sort of casual suit and tie, you know? And he's carrying a bag, and I noticed it was from a, a couple of stores down the road. And the reason I noticed it was it's where the royal family gets their shoes made. Turns out he just had some shoes made, and he picked up his shoes. Came in for a cigar and a coffee. And I'm sitting there smoking away, and I'm like, hey, 
I'm a currency trader. How do you feel about the pound and Brexit? Right? I'm just like, boom. You're in my space, dog. I own this cigar bar. Right? So anyways, he looks at me and he's like, oh, I don't know anything about finance. But he hated Brexit, right? But he looked at me, though, like he wasn't used to talking to somebody who had a job. You know, like a, an, a foreign exchange trader? Right? It's like having a conversation, like a deep, meaningful conversation with your gardener. It just doesn't happen that often, right? You're like, well, you know, uh, maybe you should. I don't know. But he it just sort of like he was very polite, but he's like, yeah, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my pleasure being in South Africa. I, I had a great time. Met a lot of fabulous people. But, uh, you know, it's interesting, though, right, guys, where somebody like that has concerns. They don't have, like, you know, dirty their hands with, like, finance, <laughs> a job. Like, oh, my God, you, you're a currency trader? Ooh, yuck. That means you work. Yeah, how funny is that, huh? I imagine someone like that owns real estate all over London, his dad and his grandfather and his grandfather's grandfather bought real estate, you know, and it just earns, you know, three million pounds a month and you, you know, and it just, ha it just has forever. Right? When someone talks about an economic downturn, you're like, yeah, one of our buildings was hit by the Germans in 1943. Yeah, that was tough. But since then, we've been filthy, stinking rich. So, All right, so hopefully you can see the, the, the calendar okay. Industrial production out of Japan. These guys are in a world of hurt, huh? Well, let's see. It was negative 2% almost. Now it's only negative 1.5%. But didn't they spend like trillions of billions of quajillions? Like, I think it was quajillions, right? Do you shoot any video in South Africa to show the rest of... Uh, no? No, Miles? Miles, why don't you invite me to wherever you're from? I've always told anybody, this has been, an, uh, an, uh, you know, sort of a, my hand has been out forever, for years and years and years. If you think it's important that I come and work with you and you can gather a, a group that can share the costs and pay for, you know, the expenses and some time, um, if you're willing to do it and kick down my door to make it happen, I'll do it. And that's what Ryan did. Ryan knocked up, he kicked down my door and he's like, you're coming to South Africa and that's that. And uh, like 300 people showed up. We had a great time. But, you know, I do it so I can meet people. I'm lonely. <laughs> so, you know, where, so wherever you are, Miles, gather a group of people and kick down my door and make it happen and but, uh, yeah, my, my issue is time. I don't have time. Time, time, time. Time. I have no time. All right, so we got RBA meeting minutes, and that's going to be something you will download and read, right? Oh, you know, Miles, uh, South Africa, the part that I was, is very similar to every part of the world I go to. I always find myself in sort of the most, uh, so, sort of the wealthiest finance business related part of the neighborhood so whether I'm in China South Africa Timbuktu um, I, it's like oh wow it's great everything's just like the rest of the world right but did I hang out in like you know South African slums no <laughs> you know what I mean it's just like no so you know hey Johannesburg beautiful town very similar to like every other town in the world in a good way, not in a bad way. Very similar to the best part of Shenzhen. 
Very, best part of here, best part of there, you know. So anyway, yeah, not out in the bush, right? So, you know, it's just, yeah, uh, Johannesburg's wonderful. The, and the people are great and the food was awesome. My, Right? So... Few pictures? I don't think I took any pictures. <laughs> oh, I took a picture of the group I trained on the first or second day. I don't know. No, I didn't take any pictures. Honestly, I don't think I took any pictures of South Africa. Why? Why do people normally take pictures? See, I'm not on vacation. Well, I am on vacation, but I'm there to, to help people and uh, that's it. I, honestly, I, I think I took one picture and it was the class. That's what was important to me. All right, come on, you guys dis distract me. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Aussie meeting minutes, right? The Reserve Bank of Australia meeting minutes. You are hereby ordered to download those meeting minutes and read them. Take notes. Write down some bullet points of the things you understood. Write down some bullet points of the things that you're not so clear upon. And then go figure it out. Add that to your fundamental analysis. Two questions. One, will the RBA cut interest rates again? You have to answer that. And two, what is the economy going to be like in six months or a year? According to what they're talking about, right? Yeah. Oh, Jenna, yeah, you know, um, Spielberg took a bunch of pictures, didn't he? That'd be cool. Are they on the site? Yeah. But anyways. Yeah, that'd be cool. If you can keep me in check with that, Jenna, I'd appreciate it. Okay, so then what? Then we move on to the UK. News, 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 news tomorrow, right? And this is all sort of the first, I don't know, is this coming, is this post-Brexit? When I don't even remember Brexit. It's so funny. When was Brexit? Uh, this, no, I guess this wouldn't be after Brexit, wouldn't it? It'd be still before. June 23rd, June 24th. But this is not, this is only the 16th. Oh, June, so July. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, this would all be July data. Okay, good. So this will be important. Right? This stuff here would be important because, it, you know, a lot of people are concerned it would be the end of the world. when it came to uh, Brexit. And, you know, this is going to be most likely proof that it wasn't the end of the world. But the funny thing about Brexit is it hasn't actually happened, right? Yeah, maybe, right? Yeah, suggested, <laughs> perhaps, right, Andrew? Hmm, maybe, maybe. So all of this is going to be uh, interesting. Uh, now, the difference between PPI and CPI. CPI is a good uh, is a basket of goods and services that you purchase throughout your 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 day, your week, your month, your year. Lawyer fees, for example, right, Andrew? Lawyer fees go in there. How much did it cost to hire a lawyer per hour last month? How much did it cost to hire a lawyer this month? So on and so forth. And there's like thousands of things in this basket. Okay. That's the consumer price index. So what we're tracking is how much you need to spend to get the same thing over and over and over again. PPI is the cost of making those things really, right? It's the producer price index. So if you're making things, 
you're making widgets what was your cost per unit this month what was your cost per unit last month what's your cost per unit next month we want to track that because if you're if your widgets made out of gold and gold prices are going up and down up and down we want to track that right because eventually you might be able to you want as a producer of something you want to keep your prices stable and if 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 your prices of producing your widget go up then you're just your margins are going to shrink if the the cost uh, of building a widget goes down you, then your margins will increase your, your profit margins but if your profit margin goes to zero you're gonna have to raise prices and then that gets passed on to the retail guys and that gets passed on to you as a consumer so PPI going up you'll see is the canary in the coal mine for actual CPI okay so anyways so PPI CPI all that kind of stuff now what we're very interested in is CPI because that actually means inflation this is sort of like inflation might go up this is inflation is going up and then anytime you have uh, you know hearings or testimony or stuff like that that's going to be high so inflation 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 we want to know what's going on in the UK this is an opportunity if there's a report you should download it and read it take make bullet points is that right just your luck right the baby goes to sleep and your internet goes down Psh. all right so if look for an opportunity to learn something new here right probably won't be shocking but it's your opportunity to start building a fundamental bias oh really was it me loudmouth huh loudmouth woke up the baby okay euro 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 right zoo 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 all right fine read the zoo 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 can be important right German zoo fine uh, but once again we already know the trend right and things are not that great in Germany 49.80 is not good okay so I wouldn't expect any major drama here at all okay but German Zoo would be on the like the list of things to pay attention to you know over the you know just over the course course of your career okay it's uh, it's a survey which is fine I don't really like surveys but it's a survey but also it's particularly Germany and you want to listen to uh, to important news out of Germany because it's one of the largest exporting nations in the world and it's also the largest most powerful country in you know continental Europe so like you can skip Liechtenstein okay but you should probably pay attention to Germany. Whoa. Huh? And then America. Look at all this news, guys. America. Let's let's right. Housing starts great. Building permits great. We want to make sure all of this is on track. Because every time uh, you build new houses, you need workers, you need material you need things like refrigerators and stoves that kind of stuff it all needs to go in right copper pipes and PVC pipes and so copper pipes are made out of copper PVC is nylon nylons made out of plastic plastics made out of oil okay so anyways pay attention to that we want to make sure that that trend is still going up inflation report out of the United States obviously we want some the higher these numbers are out of CPI the more people are going to say see the Fed has to raise interest rates okay got it okay 
Miles says, if Germany is, is such an export nation, why are they the only one opposing drug ease, easing and stuff? You know, that's a big cultural question. And it goes all the way back, really, uh, to the end of World War One. World War One, you needed a after World War One, you needed a wheelbarrow full of Deutschmarks to buy a loaf of bread. Okay. Okay. So, oh, question here: If all those, uh, if uh, if the USD news is good, should one anticipate? Well, no. No, I think maybe, if anything, if you were going to try to correlate these things, because NFP is good, this would be good, right? Right. Not the other way around? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Because this doesn't tell you if people are buying more things. It just tells you that they're, they're spending more money and driving up costs. But that could be the devalu devaluation of your currency, right? Not, right? Not more work, not more demand. Right? The supply of money going up. So, for example, you know, inf inflation is 700% in Venezuela. Well, that's not because the, the job market's good. <laughs> it's because their money is worthless, right? Industrial production, capacity utilization, why are these things important? Because they're going to impact GDP. So, you know, if, for example, if CPI doesn't tell you if the economy is healthy or not, it just tells you whether prices are growing up or going down, but it doesn't tell you why. Industrial production and capacity utilization is a manufacturing, you know, um, it's manufacturing data. And if factories are getting new orders, industrial production and capacity utilization figures will go up from, let's say, 75% to 85% to 95%. Or at 100%, every factory in the United States is moving at 100%. They're doing double shifts. They're squeezing everything out, and they still can't meet demand. Right? Then prices are going to skyrocket, right? But that's not because of, you know, it's, it's, it's not like, I mean, it's literally orders. Oh, Joseph says, I attended the half-day advanced class last week. Cool. You share, shared my teachings. Uh-oh, you owe me money. No, I'm just joking. Uh, with guys I trade with, and we're already producing positive results. Hallelujah. Right? Awesome. So anyways, dust and production capacity utilization, if that's going up, that's because people are buying things, inventories are being drawn down, um, retailers are, are sending in new orders, and those things need to be made, and therefore industrial production and capacity utilization figures go up, and that's a good thing. And at some point, as 75 goes to 85, 85 goes to 95, 95 goes to 100, right? Then what will happen is demand will, will, will be higher than supply, and it would be like an auction, a thousand people trying to buy the same, you know, Renoir, prices go up, right? So that's how that all is linked together. So that could be one, Stefan. So one thing that newer traders always try to do, uh, and it's a smart thing to do, is just try to like, you know what, what? What thing is best? How do I? How do I prioritize all these things? Right. Well, at the end of the day, you're going to need to know everything. 
Okay. At the end of the day, you're going to need to know everything. And you're going to have to accurately predict the future every single day. So I wouldn't prioritize too much. I would just say this is going to take time, right? So I've been at Harvard a couple of years. I got four more years to go. <sighs> Why rush it? My job is to sit down and learn whatever they want me to learn, and then you know submit whatever work they want me to submit. And then when they when they give me an examination to get a hundred percent. I got a 98 uh, one of my uh, tests uh, uh, in the summer, and I was very upset. But don't worry about it. I got my second one, and that was 100. <laughs> right? But that's your job, right? And then you go into the next task, right? Next examination, get 100%. Anything less is going to be a disappointment, right? And then, you know, then you get to your final examination, and then, you know, and then now you got your class, and you got your A, and then there's another class, and then there's another one, and then another one, and another one, and, and all of a sudden, you're done, right? I want you to, to look at trading Forex that way, like it's it's going to be not, not even a three-year plan, it's going to be a ten-year plan. And all of this stuff is important, because what happens is it becomes a three- and four-dimensional fluid puzzle. Right, and and you're it, it's it's uh, you know what you're doing, what you're doing ten years from now will look like voodoo magic to you now. It'll seem like voodoo magic to you now because you're like, oh, it's so complex and so dynamic and so crazy. You know, ten years from now, you'll be able to handle it. Right, because you you have to know everything about every country and then see how they're moving. So you can understand things like Australia cuts interest rates, the value of the Aussie dollar goes up. New Zealand cuts interest rates, the value of the Kiwi dollar goes up. And it's just like, chow. You're just on a whole other level, right? So just give it time. Just fall in love, that's all. Just fall in love. Relax. Just enjoy being in love, and things will progress. Okay, all right. So then, then we move into uh, Kiwi, Kiwi jobs. Kenneth says, "Should you really pay attention to median things?" Well, yeah, it, it may move the market if it comes out surprising, but you should just know this. Okay, you sh you should know these things. You're a foreign exchange trader. If you want to be a professional, it's simply because you need to know this stuff. So think think five years from now, Kenneth. Okay, five years from now, um, you want to be a trader that is sophisticated enough to start your own fund, and you should be an expert. Right? You should just be an expert. People will turn to you because you have an expertise that they don't have. And you should just know a lot about, like, New Zealand. Because that's what you do. It's just, what that's your profession. Okay? So may, maybe, maybe not, it produces a, a scalp. But remember... News is not fundamentals. Each one of these things are just news events. And it, it could be a risk to your trade. It could be an opportunity to make a trade, like a scalp. Right? could be a risk to your swing. But also, what you're looking at is, if somebody said, tell me about New Zealand. Should we invest there? And you should say, oh, well, buh, 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 buh. And, and you're all of a sudden like, I know everything there is to know about New Zealand. And they're like, really? Yeah. Let me tell you about the Kiwis. And you unleash an amazing amount of information. Okay? That's where you want to be five years from now, right? People will turn to you for help. Right? A lot of people have this dream, how to, how to become filthy, stinking rich. 
Well, you better be incredibly intelligent and knowledgeable because people will need to turn to you for that expertise that they don't have. They have money, they don't have the expertise. And apparently if you want to be filthy, stinking rich, apparently you don't have any money. It's a mindset of people with no money want to be filthy, stinking rich. Great. So now if you don't have the money, then you better develop the expertise. Otherwise, money ain't going to flow your way, baby. All right. Okay, should we care about the Swiss zoo? No. See, I, I, do I care about the Euro zoo? There's another zoo out here somewhere. European zoo? No. I only care about German zoo. Okay. All right. The, the Federal Open Market, Market Committee meeting minutes. What are we supposed to do here? Download and read it. By the way, I've been away for a while. When is um, when is uh, the, uh, the Wyoming Jackson Hole Jackson Hole meeting? When is that? Fed Jackson Hole twenty ninth. Let me Google that sucker. Economic policy symposium. Kansas City Fed throws this gig, right? Uh, 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 mm, 25th to tw 27th. Okay. If you guys want to, this is, this is what I'm looking at here. Each year since 1978, the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City has sponsored a symposium of booze and debauchery. <laughs> <laughs> debauchery <laughs> for uh, you know the crazy you know economists those those economists the crazy <laughs> sorry to those those fed guys they're crazy yeah years ago when I uh, I checked into the into the Jekyll Island Hotel where the Fed was created I rented the penthouse I'm checking into the penthouse and I'm thinking what could be better than this I'm checking into the penthouse where like JP Morgan would have stayed when they were creating the Fed like how can this get better and I check in turns out the Fed was having a secret meeting and the guy leans forward and he's like, I'm sorry, sir, I can't check you into the penthouse. It's not ready yet. I'm like, what are you talking about? I just drove in. It's 4 o'clock. It's a penthouse. You, you put me in that room, boy. Right? And he, he leans forward and he says, Ben Bernanke is still in the room. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, it just got better. woo -hoo! Yeah, so the Fed's having secret meetings and stuff. And then what? Then they go to Jackson Hole and party it up there let's talk inflation <laughs> while we like go fishing what a great gig huh to have all these secret meetings and stuff the best thing about being a central banker is 99.7 99.9 percent of the time you don't do anything you should be a central banker huh <clears throat> so anyways, download those uh, meeting minutes, read them. Then a whole bunch of yen news coming out. And, you know, Japan's in a world of hurt, right? We, we saw that from earlier data. Their industrial production, capacity utilization, all that's really bad. What are they, what are they going to do? We've been stalled out on this triple bottom now for a long time, right? I mean, basically since Brexit. On, on USDN Daily. And didn't they say they're going to like look at things until the end of September? 
That really disappoints me. Because next week is supposed to be the best week of the year for me. But I need them to do their job. And if their job is thinking about it, what what kind of like analysis do they need to do that they haven't been doing for the last 20 years? So I think a lot of countries, they need to go crazy now. I, I think like maybe the United States or other, let's say, Western countries, they should just do things like improve every airport in the United States, for example. There should be a bridge czar that oversees the renovation and retrofitting of every bridge and every overpass in the United States, for example. Right? So on and so forth. Do you know how, mu how much lo logistics that will take? How many, uh, how many resources that will take? Right? Like things like... Uh, what is this? Hang on. And once you buy like aggregate to improve roads, then someone's going to move the aggregate, which means all these like trucking companies need jobs and just all that kind of stuff, right? Wouldn't that be amazing though? Just like rebuild every every piece of infrastructure. The population of Atlanta is going to double in 25 years. Do we have the bridges now? No. Do we have the roads now? No. How about the airport? It's already the busiest uh, passenger airport in the world. What's it going to be like when Atlanta doubles? We better get on with it. You know there's like no real public transportation in the United States. One thing I like about traveling around the world, it's like you just jump on a train, boom. If you're in Europe, jump on a train, you're there. South Africa, right? Like everywhere else. It could be a half an hour to get you to the airport. It could be two hours to get to you to the airport. We're not really sure. But if you take a train, it's 15 minutes. <laughs> right? Come on, America. Let's build some trains, right? Let's spend a trillion dollars building trains. But let's put the money into the economy. If the Fed, let's say, printed some more money, It would go to the banks and it would sit in the bank. There's like a, tr there's what, three trillion dollars in excess reserves right now in the United States banking system, something like that. Can't remember. Uh, I looked at it like eight months ago. But it's something crazy like that. Three trillion dollars. And where did the three trillion dollars come from? The Fed printed it, bought, well, they, you know, they didn't actually print it, but the Fed created it, they bought bonds with it, the bond dealers put it in the bank, and what did the bank do with it? Parked it at the Fed. So the Fed, let's say, made $3 trillion, put it into the banking system, and the banking system parked it at the Fed. So the Fed created $3 trillion, and now it's sitting at the Fed, the $3 trillion. How much does that benefit you personally? Or let's say the average American. How much do they benefit from the banking system having $3 trillion parked in the bank? Zip. Zero. Zilch. Nada. Right? But, okay, that's the Fed now, oh, that oversees the banking system. If the government, print, uh, you know, just borrowed $3 trillion, what's the difference? Either way, right? 
they borrowed three trillion dollars and they rebuilt every road every bridge um, every airport built new railroad high-speed transportation systems across California and all that kind of stuff and across America and just rebuilt everything in the Northeast how much of that money goes into the economy Well, essentially all of it. You see what I mean? Essentially all of it. Because even, a, let's say you're a truck driver and, you, and now you're working again. You got a new job because you're moving this aggregate because they're rebuilding roads in your, in your area. So now you're picking up the aggregate and taking it out to the road, dumping it there. You have a job. You get paid. Some of that goes to your bills, right? Some of it goes to spending on things that you didn't have before, but now because you have a good job, you buy yourself a nice TV, so that goes there. You pay it down your credit card, maybe, and then you park some of it in the bank, either just sitting in cash or maybe it's a retirement account. But then your bank acts as a financial intermediary, parks 10% at the Fed, loans 90% of that out, to small businesses in your community. So now that they hire people and they do this and they do that and they have jobs and they buy TVs and they pay down their credit card debt and then they park money at the bank in which their bank deposits 10% at the Fed and then loans out money to other small businesses or maybe mortgages in your community. You see what I mean? Do you know what poor people in poor countries do? They take their money and they hide it in their backyard or under their bed or in a coffee can in the roof, in the in the you know in the freezer, right? And what they what they've chosen to do is stay poor. Because it doesn't get multiplied magnif magnified through their community. Right? Does their does the cash in their refrigerator grow five percent a year because they've invested that money into the stock market? And over the course of twenty five years, does it does it grow and magnify through compound interest into a significant retirement account? Meanwhile, businesses around you know all around them are benefiting from the magnification or multiplication of the money through the economy, local economy? No, 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 no. So nobody gets rich. You don't get rich, your neighbors don't get rich. It's amazing, right? So you can think of, think of every wealthy economy in the world, and then think of every poor economy in the world, and then ask yourself, what kind of banking system do these economies have? And you'll find out the poor ones don't have a banking system, and the rich ones have a very sophisticated banking system, like Switzerland, <laughs> right? So Stefan says, uh, apparently the Fed doesn't want people to earn money. No, they want people to spend money. There's a difference. So what are you supposed to do, Stefan, if you if you got money parked somewhere and it's not earning any cash? It's not earning a return. You're supposed to do something else with your money. You ever ask yourself why the stock market has almost tripled since the bottom? It's because wealthy people have taken their money and invested into the stock market because they can't earn an income in bonds. Okay. So anyways, wow, where are we? Okay, but wow, I'm taking a long time. I'm sorry. Aussie jobs report, it's scalp. If you can make 80 to 120 pips, get out. Dan asks, when negative interest rate policies kick in, 
does that mean the central bank wants to discourage people from parking money? Yes, the, absolutely, Dan. Yeah, Pacini says, uh, yeah, S&P 500 became a bond. Well, sort of, yeah, absolutely. What happened in 2001 when interest rates in the United States dropped to 1%? What did people do with their money? Yeah, Andrew. Yeah, that, that you're taking on additional risks, but sure. No, they bought real estate. We got ourselves a real estate bubble 10 years later, or seven years later. Your house became your bond, so to speak. That happened all around the world. And if you read the meeting minutes out of Australia, they're worried about such things. When I was in China... Uh, 2000 and something, 2004, five, I don't know, when, when, uh, I don't, uh, 2002, I can't remember, uh, uh, you know, first, when, when, this was a long time ago, let's just say that, I was in China a long time ago, and uh, I was touring, uh, I think in, the, in this case I was in Chengdu, which is like almost Tibet. And I'm looking at like three million US dollar homes and apartment buildings. Amazing, right? And I was talking to uh, someone and, and she said, yeah, actually I own th three or four in that building there. And she's talking about apartments. I said, wow, that's amazing. She said, well, the amazing thing is those apartments are usually sold three or four or five or six times before it's even built. Before you could even move in, it's been sold six times. <laughs> and every time it got more expensive. That's what happens when you have nothing else to do with your money. So, you know, so central bank has to be careful about these things. So anyways, Aussie Jobs Report, I like it. It's a great scalp. You should totally be there. You should totally do it. It's all good, my friend. And if you nail 100 pips on the scalp, you think it's going to go up two or 300 pips, or maybe it's just going to go up all week or all month. Uh, I've experienced many times over that it, it'll go up 100 pips. It'll come all the way back. Now, maybe it's just my dumb luck, but I, I can think of probably a hundred times where I made a hundred pips and it came all the way back. So, uh, it's one of these things where it's a pop, you know, pop and reverse, pop and drop. So, if you can scalp it, take your money and run, has been my experience. But, you know, these things change. Thursday, 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 UK retail sales. Once again, how are things going on since Brexit? That's what we really care about. Probably not the end of the world, but we'll see. Pre-Brexit, the stuff coming out now is post-Brexit, so we'll see. Eurozone, CPI, they don't have any inflation. It's Europe. <laughs> well, maybe in Liechtenstein, right? That's what you're thinking. Philly Fed, fine. And then ECB monetary policy meeting stuff. If there's a report, download it and read it. You got a lot of downloads this week. RBA, FOMC, ECB, great. A lot of reading. You should see my classes that are coming up. It's just stupid. 
my classes are just stupid. The amount of work, it's just ridiculous. You're like, no, a human can't do that. <laughs> just dumb. Do you think you got a lot of reading? Oh, my God. <sighs> All right. And then we end the week with kitty cat, kitty cat, kitty cat, boom. And then rig count, rig count, rig count, right? Oh, did I skip over Wednesday uh, oil or is it just not on here? Yeah, Wednesday we got oil inventories. And then Friday we got uh, rig count. Um, no, no, there's only two a year, Andrew. Maybe, maybe I just don't have my head screwed on right, but... Um, I don't think so. But, you know, that's how you get into it, right, Andrew? Just, why don't you Google it? Yeah. Why don't you Google it? And by doing so, like, do the research. Let us know tomorrow. Don't, don't tell us this think stuff. Tell us for a fact tomorrow, and what you're doing is educating yourself. And, you know, tell us when the, when the next one is. Right? So anyway, so lots of CAD news. So CAD Friday, just think Friday CAD. Baker Hughes, oil, oil, CAD, CAD CPI. It's all good in the hood, right? Now let's take a look at the euro commit versus U.S. dollar commitment of traders report. Because I don't believe nothing's changed on our end. Oh, I don't think this will change, right? No, I don't know what I don't know what it is. All right, but this is, but this data is good. Okay, so this is back down in here, middle of uh, last week. What we're looking at, first of all. Or the bulls. Okay, you tell me what has happened here with the bulls. This gray gray line is the bull. Just this this gray line where the little hand is. Can you actually see there's less and less and less week over week over week? Okay. There were more people long Euro in June than the middle of August, right? Well, it then even nothing, if it was true, nothing happened, that would be information too, but it's even like slightly down, right? So, right? So maybe this is the peak, the first week of July, then down, then slightly up, and then down, and then down, and then down again, right? And there's less people long since May, right? So it looks like May would have been a double top on February's high. And there's actually been sl slightly down, and then a little bit of retracement, and then down again since then, right? So certainly not up. And maybe just slightly down, right? But aren't isn't the Euro USD up? We were at one oh five. Right? This is and then this is just recently, right? What is this? One oh six? Right, that kind of thing. Look at here. When we went down, up, 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 down, down, up, 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 up. Notice here generally, I mean there are some some people here started buying, but notice it was like two months after the fact. Then people started buying. 
then it tapered off, and then, you know, and then look. Do, 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 do. Sideways, 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 right? But we're... Right, let me double check. Okay, that's net. I might actually be looking... Look, where's the weekly close price? Oh, it's this one here. Okay. So we were down 105, and then we went all the way up to 115. Okay, see, 105, 115. Generally speaking, no one was buying the euro. Now there was a little uptick here, and then it leveled off again. And no one was doing anything with euro. Isn't that amazing? Generally, like, since here, February, all the way across, basically no change in the purchase of euro futures. Yet the euro went up 1,000 pips. And then it came down a thousand pips, and no, nothing was changing. Isn't that interesting, huh? So it wasn't people buying euro; it was getting out of their dollar longs. Interesting, huh? Okay, on the flip side of that, short in this light. Shorts are going up. Look what happened to price. Shorts are coming down. Look what happened to price. Right? Shorts are going up. Price is kind of coming down. And then the shorts got out over the last couple of weeks. Less people short price rebounds. So you're either buying dollars or you're getting out of buying dollars. So if you're pro US dollar and you see Euro USD going up, you simply do your job. And that is not chase price around like a buffoon. But simply identify the next couple of layers of resistance and prepare to short there if the market drops. You got it? Under a minute to the August Empire Manufacturing reading expected at 2.0. Wow, what a beautiful chart, huh? Minus 4.21, minus 4.21 versus plus 2 expected for Empire. New orders rise plus plus 1 versus minus 1.8 previously. Price is paid index going to 15.5 from 18.7 prior. Employment index minus 1 versus minus 4 prior. So, I didn't see your post today, guys. Did you make your post? I thought it was Monday. I remember a couple of weeks ago, before I went to Africa, people promised that they would put on Monday, at a bare minimum, 
their weekly swing trade plan. Did you wimp out? Yeah, well, Empire Manufacturing is not that big of a deal on a global scale. That's much more micro. But, hey, guys, seriously, you're trying to improve as a currency trader, right? Where's your weekly swing trade plan? Why don't I see, like, 30 or 40 swing trades for the week? It's Monday. What's your plan? You had weekly pivot points. Why isn't it here? Hello? What are you thinking? How dare you speak that way to me? Look, I'm trying to make you a success. When are you going to take a stand? Where's your weekly trade plan? A basic swing trade using like weekly pivot points. Did you not do it because I wasn't around? When the cat is gone, the mice will play? Or, or what? Or did everyone simply have something super important today that they couldn't create a weekly trade plan? Let me ask it in a more positive way. I'm sorry if I've hurt your feelings. How many people volunteer today to post their weekly trade plans? Pick one currency pair. Predict, try to predict the future based on nothing but technical analysis for the week. Anybody. It might take you 15 minutes. Thank you, James. Is anyone else going to volunteer to become a successful Forex trader? Hello? Okay. Start next Monday. All right, we'll delay success another week, okay? Anybody else? There are lots of people that have been here for weeks and months and years. Okay. Yeah, Danny Boy, me, me. anybody else? I mean, this. I think this is unbelievably important. I don't know if you get that. How are you supposed to become a, uh, a more successful Forex trader if you're not planning your week in advance? Anybody? You got an answer to that? Look, Daniel has a beautiful trade set. Look how long it takes. Took a screenshot. He says, look, it's retraced down to sort of a weekly support. If it's not going to be um, here, it's going to be up there. He's looking for a reversal pattern. He's waiting for that oscillator to come down. On the smaller time frame, he's looking at this as support. Again, arrow, arrow, arrow. This is already coming up. A couple of screenshots and a couple of sentences. Okay. So he's waiting for the yen to weaken. He wants to carry the Kiwi yen higher. That's a, that's a valid trade plan. Nice post. Thank you for for sharing. Good luck. Pray for the BOJ. <laughs> right? So this whole website is designed to help you move forward in your creating, trading career. Do you understand?
So you should at least, at a bare minimum, on Sunday or Monday morning when you get new weekly pivot points, you should sit there and analyze them. Okay? You following me? And you say, well, based on what I see here, I think it will go up. Here's my levels of support, because we all know you only buy at support. And I think it'll go up from here. And from and with that, you know, whether it's an M2 or or M1, whatever. And then you say, based on that, I think it'll go up to this level, to the to the level of resistance. Okay. I want you to make a commitment. Can you be wrong here, and still be okay if you post if you post a trade plan on Forex today? And it doesn't work out. Are people going to laugh at you? Are people going to like show up at your front door? Why would you not create a trade plan? You're here in a safe environment with other people that also want to be a success as a Forex trader, right? So I, I beg of you to take advantage of something that's been built to help you succeed. Will you do that? Will you post a trade plan? Okay. Hey. You need to take control of your trading career, right? And this is how you do it. Thank you. I think it will lead to your success. Because you are you are sort of you are taking a risk of looking foolish. But how else are you going to become a, a success? Right? You got to say, I've done my analysis, you put it up there, you document your analysis and then you should review if you're right or wrong and then try again next week, right? You're going to, as a trader, every time you pull the trigger, you're taking a stand. This is a great way for you to improve. Yeah. Cool. Let's do a quick analysis. Okay. What do you want to do with this? Okay. First thing I think we should do is identify this low. And then zoom in. I don't even have a fancy drawing tool. I'm just taking shots. Okay. Uh, go back to the hour, I think. Okay, no fancy drawing tools or anything like that. And then I can just do save a picture as. USD yen, one hour, right? Okay, and this is under AAA, okay. So now I could do something like this. Uh, 
Upload. Oh, don't look at my dirty laundry. Where are my pictures? There it is. USD went long, right? Okay. Uh, weekly trade plan. USD, Japanese yen. Um, okay. This is a potential setup for bulls that wish to buy USD yen at long term support. Here it is USD yen weekly pivot set up if this pair drops back below 100 then looking for a reversal pattern in the pivot profit zone for an upside move below this area is a death trap okay that took a long time right boom i just posted it oh snap oh i posted it in the wrong one hang on uh oops make Yeah, no, I'm not saying that, that that's the only way, right, James? And M2 would be the right area. But that this also, if it fell back to, let's say, 100, and that was a weekly reversal zone, and then uh, you did see a reversal pattern, that would also be that would also be a buy zone, right? Okay. Oh, so I guess what we could do is this. What do you think, guys? Was that an, was that a huge, unbelievable effort? I didn't use any special tools. I didn't have to buy any software. No, James. Okay. Look at there I am right on the home page. And of course, if you click your name, you get taken to your own journal. Right? So I don't know, get involved. If you want to be a success, get involved. Put yourself in an uncomfortable zone, right? So anyways, that was built for you. That's a pretty nice website to be able to do that so easily and so beautifully. All right, without further ado, I got a roll, buddy. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average, and we'll do a lot more technical analysis tomorrow. What do you think? Smell like a plan? Great. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.